So this is the practice test for the concept bite and 6-1 to 6-3. What's up, Chloe? Do I have elk time today? I do. It might already be full. There might be one slot open. Alrighty. So we're simplifying, and part of simplifying is not leaving any negative exponents. So that's kind of silly that that instruction is up there. We already know that. So let's take a look at number one. Remember, you want to analyze it first. Think about what has to be done first. What would you do first? This is your review. We've learned all this stuff. I want to hear from you. Yes, absolutely. Let's start there. That's a great place to start. So we would get 3 to the 3rd, x to the ninth, y to the negative 12th, and then we still have our little bubble, x to the 6th y to the 12th for multiplication. That's going to drive me nuts. I'd rather use parentheses. Do you know what 3 to the 3rd is? 27. Ideas about what to do with all these x's and y's sitting here. Okay, so how are we going to do that? How do you multiply similar bases? What do you do? Add exponents. All right, so we've got a 9 and a 6. Wow, that's a whopper. X to the 15th. But good news on the y's, correct? So that's going to be y to the 0. Should I even write that down? What is it? It's 1. It's 1. So why bother writing it down? All right, now, start thinking about that whole absolute value thing, and sometimes that starts messing with you. Should we be thinking about absolute value stuff in these problems? These aren't radicals, so we don't need absolute value stuff. Now, just a test-taking strategy. If you're worried about that, kind of look at the first page. You get down to number 6 and look at the instructions right before number 6. So that would be the only spot where you'd say, oh, yeah, that's right, I need absolute value bar stuff on these. All righty, let's go to number 2. What are you thinking? We do. Help them out. Daddy. idea. And that's what Jackson was trying to say, but couldn't get the word reduce. What about the A's and B's and C's? How? Subtract. Okay, so let's see. Um, but we have an A to the negative fourth. And A to, that's okay. So negative four minus one would be negative five. Oh, that takes care of that negative, huh, when you do that? It does. It's reciprocals. B, hmm, we have a 2 minus a 4. That's going to be a negative 2. That's got to go on the bottom and become positive. C's, 3 minus a negative 2. Yeah, because that's a 5. Anything else we could combine, put together, reduce, anything else? Dunaruni. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bless you. Oh, come on, smart board. Be nice. Oh, wowzers. That looks like a lot of negatives. I'm not a fan. I am not a fan. Um, Should we? or is, Okay, let's think about this, though. If we do that, aren't we making a whole lot more negatives? Do we want lots of negatives? No. Okay, so then let's think order of operations. We should do the stuff in parentheses first. Is there anything we can do in the parentheses? Well, there sure is. I see a negative in there. We're not supposed to leave negatives. What do we do with that? Put it in the bottom.
MN. M should come first. Thoughts? Oh, I forgot to put the little thing <laughs> two up there. That would make it a little easier. Okay, so explain to me what are negatives for? What do negative powers do? I'm trying to figure out a way to get rid of that negative up there with the negative two. What do negatives do? Everybody's forgotten over a three-day weekend. They flip stuff. So how about if we flip it so we don't have a negative anymore? They're for reciprocals. Negative powers are for reciprocals. That's the reason that we took this negative 3 up on the top and moved it down to the bottom, because it's for reciprocals. Now if we distribute, does everybody see it's going to be distributing a positive 2? So that I'm not too scared of. We know what 4 squared is and 3 squared is, right? Reducible? Anything to do with the 16 and 9 that we could fiddle with? It's done. It's a goner. Yeah, that's it. So remember, those negative powers are for reciprocals. Now, could you have distributed the negative 2? Oh, it would have been ugly. Yes, you could have, but it would have been really ugly. And then you would have had all kinds of little negatives to flip around in there. Easier just to change one. What did I write wrong? Oh, because I just did the... Thank you. Thank you. I just did the numbers. What should we put? M to the... N to the... Yeah. I got yakking about the 16 and the 9, and <laughs> totally blew off the powers there. There we go. You feel okay about 1, 2, and 3? Alrighty, so let's go to 4, which I think is on my next page here. Find all real square roots of each number. 196. 14? Just 14? Ah, square roots. Square root of negative 121. No real answers. No real solutions. Going to be able to do those on the test? Okay. Ooh, cube roots. Yeah, you might want the power chart handy for that one, huh? Cube root of negative 729. Negative 9? So negative 9 times negative 9 times negative 9 is negative 729. Beautiful. Yeah, it is. Uh oh. Cube root of 512 216ths. I don't think we're supposed to think of it that way, are we? No. There you go, do them separately. So find me the cube root of 512. Six. Hey, wait a second. That's reducible. What's that reduced to? So what that tells me is if I'd have put 512 over 216 in my calculator, it would have reduced it for me. Either way, though, you can reduce it to start or you can reduce it at the end, whatever you have to do to make that work. Okay, now, 
simplify each radical expression. And then we're going to stop after we're done and say, do we need absolute value bars? So for number six, we would separate this and say that's going to be the square root of 144, the square root of x to the 6, y to the 8, because variables behave differently than numbers do. Give me a second. Don't we know the square root of 144? 12. Now, x to the 6, little imaginary 2 out here. So that's going to be the square root of x squared, the square root of x squared, and the square root of x squared, because we want those inverses. And then y to the 8th, oh my goodness, I'm going to be here all day. Square root of y squared, square root of y squared, square root of y squared, square root of y squared. Unless you remembered the shortcut, you know, then you wouldn't have to do all that. Because how many x's are we going to end up getting? Bless you. Three. One, two, three. And how many y's do we get? Four. So it could be that you skip all this little stuff here in the middle and you just go straight to, hey, you use division. Six divided by two is three, and eight divided by two is four. But if you get, and that's the reason I taught you this, if you get stuck, remember you can use inverses to get those. Now, last second thought is, does this need absolute value bars? Yes, both x and y? Just x. Good. Even root. Odd power answer. Excellent. So maybe we just use the shortcut for 7 since I wrote all over the top of the space for number 7. So let's just do this. Cube root of negative 216. Get to use your power charts. Negative 6. Can we use the shortcut for the A's on this one? A to the fourth. Absolute value bars? Mm -mm. Not necessary. Ooh, there's a monster. Fourth root of 3,125. find it yet? It's not on there, is it? Mm. So do we have anything with a nice 5 at the end of it? In the fourth root list? Let's give it a try then. Let's see if that will go in there nicely. Oh, beautiful. 4 through to 625, 4 through of... Five. All right. Now, can we get away with just using our nice, easy division on this one? No, because we're going to have remainders, right? So it will go into seven once. Oops, I forgot my little four on that one. But what's the ugly remainder for the x's? Three. Going to go into 13? How many times? Three. Perfectly. We have an ugly remainder on that one. How much? Four, eight, twelve, just one. Oh, maybe I'll put that up front here because I ran out of space. All right, pretty stuff. 4 through to 625, you told me was on the chart. What's that? 5. 4 through to 5, something nice? Ugly. Well, then we have x, but we have a 4 through of x to the third. And then we have 1, 2, 3 y's, but we have an ugly 4 through to y to the first. All right, all the pretty stuff out front. What's pretty? Five. X. And then all the ugly stuff. What's ugly? One, two, 
one way. Yep. We got them. Well, all right then. Last second thought of. Do we need them? I don't think so. We do. Just the X, just the Y, both. Odd power answers. X to the first and Y to the third. There it is. Boy, that was a challenging one, wasn't it? Nine does not look quite as complicated. I hope not, too. So we separate the number part and treat that differently. Hey, do we know what the cube root of 125 is? It's five, yeah. How about uh, the A? Does that go in nice so we don't have to write everything out? What would it be? A to the fourth? Cube root of B? Just ugly, huh? Absolute value bars. No? Nope. Odd root. Fantastic. Ooh. Okay, 10. Looks like it's going to take a little more work. Because 98 is not a perfect square. Perfect squares that will go into 98. Nice. Biggest one, I should say. 49. 49. Goes in there twice. You want to write them out for S and T, or do you just do them? Do them. Do them. S to the third. T to the. Okay, so nice stuff. Oh, we got a 7. And an S to the third and a T to the fourth. And then we got a little ugly square root of two sitting there. And our last second thought is we need them. S and T, just S. Even root, odd power answer. Oh, yuck, 432. Eesh. Cubed root of 432. Well, at least the Y's won't be horrible, right? I mean, they're not going to be ugly. Okay, so we need a cubed root that's going to go into 432 nicely. 216. 216. Goes in how many times? Twice. Beautiful. Okay. Three going to go into seven? Yes and no, right? How many times is it going nicely? Twice, but with an ugly remainder of. Okay, so we said cubed root of 216 was going to work. Is that a nice number? Better be. What is it? And we have a y squared, but we have a couple of uglies. Cube root of 2y. Last thought. Absolute value bars. Yes, no, maybe so. Mm -mm. No, 3 as the index. Yep. No dice. Ooh, another whopper of a number, huh? Hmm. And fifth root. Ooh. Okay. So it looks like we need to figure out a fifth root number that's going to divide nicely into negative 729. Let us know if you find one. 243? How many times, Mark? Five, three times? Five times? Three times. Cool. Fifth root of negative 243. Fifth root of 3. And I'm going to write this one out again because I have space here. So fifth root of x to the fifth. Fifth root of x to the fifth, leaving me with one nasty little fifth root of x to the first. Fifth root of y to the fifth, but an ugly little remainder of 3. So let's find the purdy stuff. What is the fifth root of negative 243? 
Hello. So negative three. Fifth root of three is nasty. But I have an x and another x. So oh, then another nasty. Fifth root of x to the first. I get a y, but then I have a nasty fifth root of y cubed. So all the pretty stuff up front, what do we have? x squared, 1y, is that it for purdy? Is it for purdy? All right, so fifth root of, looks like 3xy to the third for the uglies. I get them all? Okay. Absolute value bars? No chance? No, because it's odd. Fifth root. Fifth root is odd. No chance. So that was all simplifying, you know, basically the whole first page. Simplify could be the instructions for all of that. And look at the second page. Simplify each expression. But it does give us a hint, rationalize any denominators when needed. And this is kind of nice. Assume that all variables are positive. So don't worry about absolute value bars is what that's saying. Okay, look at 13. Analyze. What do you think? Make it into one. There's a whole lot we could do underneath there yet. Let's make it into one fraction. So square root of 64 over 4. Let's figure out the x's and y's while we're at it, huh? What would we get for the x's? x to the fourth. 5 minus 1 is 4. How about the y's? Good, positive 8. That's going to go up top. So now 64 fourths. Doesn't 4 go into 64? 16 times. Well, this just became a super easy little problem here. Because what's the square root of 16? 4. How about the square root of x to the fourth? x squared. Square root of y to the eighth. And they told us we don't even have to think about absolute value bars for these. They're all going to be positive. Fabulous. All right, how about 14? First thought on 14. Nothing for the 5 and 3, but can't we put a whole lot of the other stuff together? All right, then let's do it. So let's see. Oh, maybe I can fit it up here. Big cubed root of 5, a squared, b to the third, c to the third, all over 3a cubed, b, c squared. I won't skip any steps this time. So I need your thoughts on what's, because we know 5 thirds isn't going to happen, right? But your thoughts on the a's? Going to need it on the bottom. How about the B's? Two on top. C's. Okay. So now we have a new problem, don't we? We didn't get rid of radicals in the denominator. So we're going to have to split her back up. We are. We did a good job, though. I mean, we reduced it. We absolutely needed to do that. But now that problem is we've got cubed root of 3a down there. So we have to make our index match the powers. And I can only multiply cubed roots by other cubed roots. How many more 3s do I need, though? Two of them, because I need it to be 3 to the third. So I'm going to need a 3 squared on the top and the bottom. The power has to match the index. How many more A's am I going to need? Going to need two of those as well. All right, so let's see what that does to the denominator. Hopefully it's good stuff. We'll have cubed root of 3 to the third, A to the third. Oh, that's nice. Because what's the cubed root of 3 to the third, A to the third? 3A. Yeah, cubed root, cubing, inverses of each other. 
Now, the numerator might not be pretty, but that's happened to us a lot. That's okay. So let's see what we have up here. Got to follow the order of operations. 3 squared is? 3 squared? 9. What's 9 times 5? 45. That's not a horrible number. Then we have an A squared, a B squared, and a C. So then the last thing to check would be cube root of 45. Anything on that power chart below 45 that might divide into it nicely? No go. So it may be an ugly numerator, but we don't care. We got ourselves a very nice denominator, and that was our job, really. You know, Simplify it and get that denominator not to be a radical anymore. I would say, of all the problems on this test, I think that's usually the one that people struggle with the most. I, I don't know with you guys this year, because you have been doing fabulous on these. So maybe, maybe it won't be a struggle for you. Because look at how it changes gears here. And I know you guys are great at these. How do you multiply these two? How do we do that? Just foil. Yeah, it's just foil. So I look at it and I think, well, it's foil, but I'm not going to do any work I don't want to do. I know first times first is 49. What do I know about outside times outside and inside times inside? They're going to cancel. I'm not going to bother with those. See how the terms are exactly the same, but one has a minus and one has a plus. I'm not going to do that work. Last times last, minus, because we've got a negative and a positive. What's 2 times 2? 4. How about the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? I'm not going to go right to um, 3 because I didn't hear anybody saying that this time. When we were doing it last week, you guys had this down and it was boom, that's 3. But I'm going to go ahead and write that step down. Hey, wait a second. No more radicals. 49 minus 12? Ta-da! Didn't we know it was supposed to come out nice? Yeah. yeah, these are conjugates. That's that fancy word for what we see there with the plus and the minus. Hmm, 16, 16. Do you suppose we can distribute that too? Can we just distribute it? The answer is no. Why? Anybody remember why? We can only distribute if in the parentheses it's pure multiplication or division. Is that pure multiplication or division? All right, so then we follow the order of operations and say, hey, this power is for the closest thing to its left. That's parentheses. That means I've got to write this down twice. does not look like an 11. There we go. Now how do we do that? Foil. Yeah, yeah. So square root of 11 times square root of 11 is square root of 121. And yes, some of you are already writing down 11. That's cool. Can I skip outside times outside and inside times inside? No, I can't. They're both pluses. So plus 3 square roots of 11 plus another 3 square roots of 11 and plus 9. Square root of 121, 11, plus 6 square roots of 11, plus 9. I just combined those two. And our final answer would be what? 20. Question, Jackson? Is it? What do you think, everybody? Yeah, there's no more simplifying we can do. We can't we can't simplify the square root of 11, so we just leave it. Here's a nice integer part of our answer. It's a 20, and here's the radical stuff in the back, and we're good. Ooh, that looks a little more complicated. Bye. Good, the conjugate. Yep. Good catch, Jackson.
Well, I like this numerator. That's not much work at all. Denominator's a little bit of work. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Square root of 4, which is 2. Yeah, some of you will skip that step. That's fine. And then do we do outside times outside and inside times inside? That's just silly. We are not going to do that. So square root of 2 minus 7 over 2 minus 49. Yeah. 2 minus 49. Is that an okay answer? Yeah. Now, if you don't like the negatives on the bottom, you could always distribute the negative on the top. You know, it, but I'll take it either way. I mean, they're right. They're right. Wow, did they ever switch gears? Look at 18. That's like a totally different problem. What are we supposed to do with that? Test taking strategy. I want you to look at the front page. Look at all the stuff we did down at the bottom. Can we make that look like that stuff down there at the bottom? So what can we do to that that would make it look like the stuff on the bottom of the front page? Multiply them together. Yeah, we can. They're both square roots. So we need to know what 27 times 3 is, huh? thinking that's 81. What's x to the 4th times x to the 6th? x to the 10th. Ooh, square root of 81. I like that number. What's that? Okay, now. You want to write it out? Or do you already know the x's? x to the 5th? Okay. Then I won't write it out. There it is. So definitely a switch in gears there. But, you know, you're working on division, and then this one's a multiply, and that makes sense. Those things go together there. All right. Ooh, this looks interesting. So now we're supposed to add and subtract, huh? Can't do. Can only add and subtract like radicals, right? Could we make them like radicals? Oh, that's maybe it. So of these three, which one do you suppose is the smallest radical we have here? So the only way we're going to be able to do this problem is if 3 goes in nicely into these other numbers, right? So 192 divided by 3. Ooh, look at that. 3 going to 27? How many times? Ah. Well, now we're going to be able to do this because this is 8. And this will be 4 times 3, which is 12. So if we have 8 of them and we add 12 of them, how many do we have? 20. Now subtract 2. 18. So we had to simplify first, then we could put them together. Then we can combine like terms. Oh, 20. That, that's got to be just a baby problem, right? 4th root of 7 over the 4th root of 2. Should we put them together in one big fraction? Is it going to do anything for us? No. Mm, all right. So we need to come up with a 4th root of something that's going to get rid of that nasty little 2 sitting down there all by its lonesome. How many more 2's are we going to need? Three more. Top and bottom. All right, going to focus on the bottom first. That would be the fourth root of 2 to the fourth. Oh, you guys are amazing. Of course that's 2. Beautiful. 2 to the third is 8. 8 times 7 is... Anything we can do with that? We have any fourth roots small enough that they divide nicely into 56? No dice? All right. So this is going to be the fourth root of 56 over 2. Beautiful. So kind of complicated, but not too scary looking problem there. 
Oh my. Ooh, do we? Down to one minute? Okay. For problem number twenty number twenty one, we would go ahead and multiply these two together and then simplify. So we have a two times four, which is fourteen. We have a cube root of 16 times the cube root of 5, and that would give us 80. And then we would have a y to the 12th. Then we'd grab our power charts and see if we have any nice cube roots that will go into 80. And 8 will go in, obviously, 10 times. And then the cube root of y to the 12th, we could do our division. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then we'll have 14 times 2 because the cube root of 8 is 2. And then we'll have cube root of 10, y to the 4th. <coughs> Pretty stuff out front. So we have 14 times 2, which is 28, y to the 4th, cube roots of 10. And that is the end of the practice test.